Morning, family. God, welcome back to the Morning Devo. It's your bro, Sam Lopez, a.k.a. DJ Sam Rock. And we're here on the Morning Devo. And um, I was pressed for time, so I had to rush in the studio. But I'm here. Amen. And we're here. God is good. God is faithful. God is awesome, amazing. And everything that he does, everything he says is true. So we have uh, a guarantee to trust in his word because his word is always true. His word is always real. And his word is always available to all those who are willing to listen to what he's saying, what he's doing. Amen. To see his will working in our lives. It's like no other explanation about how God works things out for good, for the good, for those who love him. Other than the fact that he said it and he meant it and it's real. The word of God is true. Amen. Um, So there's no really debate about it, at least in my book, because I tested and he proved himself. I tested the word and the word is proven. Amen. I'm sorry, I'm looking down, just trying to get to my notes here. Amen. And there goes the audio is pretty good there. So let me get to my notes here and we'll get to the title over here as well. Amen to my morning devo today. It's called Obey God and Forgive. Uh, originally, I wrote Obey God and Forgive Them Already. Amen. Let's be obedient to what the word says. To what God says. Oh, that's why I know. That's why I can't get my notes. I'm in the wrong screen. But here we go. Let's get to it. Amen. The question or the statement I have is this. And I believe it's just a true statement. Not just because I wrote it. It's because when I was writing it, I was reading it to myself. I was speaking to myself, myself, my conscience. And I was saying, forgiveness is not easy. How many people could say amen? Some, to some people, they forgive and forget. And it's, it comes natural, it comes easy. For, but for me and most people that I know, forgiveness is not easy. But if those in your life need forgiveness, start praying for God to make an opportunity for you today to forgive them. Amen. And once you do that, you'll be in obedience to God. God looks at our obedience and he takes that um, higher than sacrifice. Amen. So Matthew chapter number six, verses 14 and 15 today in the morning Devo, Matthew chapter six, verses 14 and 15, obey God and forgive. Amen. So the word of God, the Lord Jesus, the Holy Spirit, God is going to help us in this area when it comes to being obedient and to forgive. Bible is clear of what the Bible says about forgiveness. Part of the gospel, the biggest part, one of the biggest part of the gospels is the forgiveness that we receive because of what the Lord Jesus did on the cross. Because Jesus was obedient, right? And he was obedient to the Father. He forgave us, right? So we're supposed to forgive others as well. Me and you are forgiven. People say, I'm not perfect, but I'm forgiven. I like that. Amen. But... We need to step up the level of thinking there. Jesus, the Lord says, we are perfect. To be perfect is a commandment. Amen. I know you could say, but we're only human. Um, We're not just only human. We're children of God. Jesus, the Lord, is the only one that gives us the right to be called children of God. Amen. Obey God and forgive. Today in the morning, Devo. If you have any questions, comments, Concerns, prayer requests, don't hesitate to leave it on the live stream. That is what we're here for. Amen. We're here to communicate, engage, love up on one another. Amen. We're not here to judge each other. We're not here to point fingers. We're here to devote some time in the first part of our day to the Lord Jesus, to the Lord God Almighty, Yahweh. Amen. Forgiveness is not easy, but if those in your life need forgiveness, Start praying for God to make an opportunity for you today to forgive. Let's do that. Amen. Let's pray first. After we pray, we'll share this out for like 60 seconds. And on the other side of those 60 seconds, we'll come back and we'll get into Matthew chapter number six, verses 14 and 15. You ready? Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you so much that you forgave us, that you forgave me, um, and that you forgive all those who put their hope, faith, and trust in you, Lord God. For all those who are humble enough to admit that they need forgiveness, they need a Savior. And that, Lord God, we will continue to stay humble and walk 
in love towards one another and that we will love you with everything that we have. Amen. Our mind, soul, body, strength, everything as a living sacrifice and that we would know that we're forgiven and therefore we should forgive others. Thank you, Lord God, for your word. Thank you, Lord God, that you have commanded us to love one another as we love ourselves and to love our neighbors as we love ourselves as well. Thank you, Lord God, for your love, your grace, and your mercy, for your power, Lord God, that you give us to forgive and that you give us this whole entire different look on forgiveness, amen, as a debt that you paid on that cross of Calvary. You forgave us our trespasses. So I thank you, Lord God. I pray a hedge of protection over myself, my family, my whole household, my whole entire bloodline in the name of Jesus. Those who are struggling in their walk in life, uh, in my family, Lord God, I pray faith upon their hearts and minds right now. I pray peace upon their hearts and minds right now. I pray the protection of God and the covering of the Arquin angels that are assigned to our lives that will be fully active. And I pray that also for every single person that's connected now, that will connect later, that will listen now, that will watch later oh, and listen later. I pray over their lives as well. The peace of God in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord God, that you will continue to just teach us and show us in your word on what this is all about. I pray this by faith, knowing that you hear these prayers and you answer them according to your will and purpose, which is always the best will for our lives and the best purpose for our lives. In Jesus' name, and we all say amen and amen. Manuel Johnson, good morning. God bless you. Amen. Sister Joanne, good morning. God bless you. Welcome back to the morning Devo, my friends and my family and God. So let's take 60 seconds to share this out. When we come back, we'll get right into it. Obey God and forgive. Let's go. back we're back let's go for it let's see what the word of god says here amen um what did i say matthew in the book of matthew chapter number six i believe it is right let me just get to my notes and make sure this is good matthew 6 14 and 15 let's go for it again questions comments concerns all throughout amen that's what the live chat is here for if i have if you have a question amen and it's really not connected to what we're saying right now you can still leave it in the chat and then um, afterwards, we'll connect and uh, we'll try to sort it, sort it out, try to get an answer from the word first. Amen. And f- for sure, the word of God will answer your questions. I know that for a fact. Amen. Trust me when I say that I look for the answers through the scriptures. If I can't find an answer uh, through you know normal ways, I go to the supernatural God who knows every single thing about me and who knows every single answer I need to be answered. Amen. That I ask the question, he answers. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Yes, um, it is. According to the scriptures, right? So God wants to see our obedience. Amen. And you're blessed and I'm blessed for it. <laughs> for obedience. Because it's a, it's a heart issue, right? Are we going to trust God, obey God? Or are we going to trust the world and obey what the world is wanting us to do? Are we going to trust the spirit of God? Or are we going to trust the flesh of man? It's our choice. And we choose wisely. I mean... I hope you would choose wisely. Amen. Welcome back. Morning Devo um, live streaming right now. Soul Winners with a Z.org, the Cellar Radio Network 
also on the podcast platforms. Uh, it will be available right after this. Amen. Because the platform that I'm using uh, uh, doesn't allow uh, live streamed podcasts any longer for whatever reason. Got to respect it. I still um, I'm amazed by the platform that I use called Spreaker for podcasting. I believe they're one of the best, if not the best podcast platform. I can't say the best because I haven't tried every single podcast platforms. And there's a lot out there. But I've been with these um, people for a long time now. And um, they serve me well. Amen. So I always would recommend Spreaker for podcasting. So let's go for it. Let's see what we have here on the presenter. Amen. There you go. Obey God and forgive on the morning Devo. And the scripture we have today. Is Matthew chapter 6, 14 and 15. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Very fair, right? Right? It's fair. What the Lord is saying here. Um, forgive others their trespasses. And then what happens? You will also be forgiven. The opposite, right? And try this whole thing about, nah, they did me dirty, so I'm going to do them back dirty. Or or what what they did is unforgivable. If you go that route, basically saying, God, I see what you're saying, but I'm going to do my own thing. Because the Bible is clear. It says, but if you do not forgive others their trespasses, Neither or neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Now, is this saying that God's forgiveness depends on us forgiving others? Is that what this is saying? If not, what could Jesus have meant by today's verses? What do you think he he meant by this? Do you mean to tell me I lose the forgiveness of God if I don't forgive others? Think about it. Amen. That's how important this is. We think about it clearly. What it it what unforgiveness interferes with is the most important thing about forgiveness. Forgiveness requires actions along with our words. Yes. We gotta put feet to our faith. We have to put action to our forgiveness. Now we just can't say it and then go about our day in unforgiveness. As a matter of fact, when you hold unforgiveness and grudges in your heart, that's like a spiritual cancer to your soul. Uh, and we don't want that. Amen. It's like it's like holding on to unforgiveness is like trying to poison someone, but you you drank the poison yourself. Right? So it's not a good idea any which way you think about it to hold on to unforgiveness. But I always say, let's just do what the word says. Amen. And although my, well, I know for sure it's not what the flesh wants us to do. Right. Flesh of man and the spirit of God, they're at war. This is always going to be at war, at odds with each other. Because the word of God is true. The spirit of God is always willing. The flesh is weak. So imagine that you are diagnosed with a terminal illness, right? There's only one known cure. You probably heard this scenario before. There's only one known cure. And it's only available from a single source. There's only one way you can get this cure. So they give you a prescription. You accept the treatment. Because you know you're going to be cured. You grant the prescription. You accept the treatment. You take it and you're, you're cured. Imagine this. But you are surprised to discover that this company did not charge you for the drug and has gifted you with more medication than you could ever need. Thinking it must be a mistake, right? You contact the drug company only to find out that they are extra generous with this miracle medicine that has cured you. They want the recipients of it to pass it on to others so they can be cured free of charge as well. So 
So you have this illness. Everybody says there's only one place you could get the cure. Company gives you the med- medication for it. And you're like, where's the charge? And it's free. And then you contact the company and they tell you, no, it's free. As a matter of fact, we're going to give you more of it. And we want you to share that with others. And we want to give, want you to give away totally free. But for some reason, you get offended. You don't want to pass it on because in your mind, right, in your mind, the people that you know who are sick with the very same disease that you once suffered from are undeserving of the treatment that saved your life. Instead, you don't want to pass it on. You decide to hoard it, needlessly hoarding it, denying others of the hope and denying others of the joy that they have found in being cured. Just an illustration, right? I want you to think about that. It's not a perfect illustration, but it's something to think about. You see the point, though. Jesus was getting at, in today's verse, He was the point was, he says that if you forgive others for their sins, right, for their sins, the Father will also forgive yours. But if you don't forgive the sins of others, God will not forgive your sins. Right? You were like, wait, what? Wait, say that again? Yeah. You might have thought that forgiveness and salvation were a free gift from God. And it is a free gift from God. But how is it a free gift to God? Just for me, or is it just for you? It's not for those other people that are unforgiven right now. Right? We're not supposed to pray for them no more because, listen, I'm forgiven and it's all for me. And whatever they're going to do, is that's on them. So how is this a free gift? If I could only forgive it, or if I could only receive it by forgiving others. So isn't that promoting workspace salvation? Is it saying that we have to do something to maintain our forgiveness? It's deep, I know, for Morning Devo. Um, but these are the notes I have Let's go back to the Bible, see what Jesus meant here. The Bible clearly states in multiple places, there's different places in the scriptures that speak about salvation, that speaks about forgiveness of sins as being a free gift of God. Romans 6.23, we see that. For the wages of sin is what? Death. But the free gift of God is what? Eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, For by grace, you have been saved through what? Through faith. And this not of your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a a result of works, so that no one will be able to boast about this. Right? God's letting us know it's a free gift. We don't deserve it. We can't do nothing to earn it. And we keep on going. (laughs) When we see examples, when Jesus was healing people, forgiving them during his earthly ministry, casting out demons and all that. He didn't heal those who could afford it and he didn't forgive people who deserved it. Say that again. Jesus didn't go about healing people that could afford their healing to get this miracle cure or whatever that they could have brought, right? And he didn't didn't forgive people who deserved forgiveness. Rather, he offered healing. He offered, he still offers it now. That's the thing about the Lord. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He offered healing and forgiveness free of charge to those he encountered. That's why it's very important. I don't want my children to follow God of the church that I attend. I want them to follow the God of the scriptures. I don't want them to be obligated to follow the God that I believe in. I want them to have an encounter with the true, living, holy, righteous God for themselves so they can know the power, the love, the grace, the mercy of this living God for themselves. And that God, the Lord Jesus, Yahweh, Elohim, El Shaddai, right? Holy Spirit God, Alpha and Omega. He will offer them healing and forgiveness free of charge, right? After that encounter. They will know that God is real in their own lives. 
So at this point, who are we, right? Uh, sinful humans that we are to withhold something that was given to us really from God. When I say sinful, I'm not saying that we're still sinners after salvation. I'm saying that we have a sinful nature called the flesh and a broken world and a broken system and the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life and all that that we have to deal with in this world. But we don't identify with what we used to be. We identify with who we are right now in Christ. Hope that helps you out. So we were sick with sin before salvation, right? We didn't deserve forgiveness and there's no way we could ever repay the debt that Jesus paid on the cross. So we know what the scripture says. We read some of the examples of the scriptures that talk about the free gift of God, right? We know what Jesus has done for us. We know we can never repay Jesus for what he did on that cross. I hope you're not trying to repay the Lord a sin debt by saying, listen, I, I got this. I could do this right now, right? I could do it on my own. I hope you're not that person because I have news for you. You can't do it on your own. We need God. You need the Father. You need the Son. You need Holy Spirit in your life daily. He gave it to those who seeked him. Yes, he gave the truth, the love, the grace, the mercy, the forgiveness, salvation for those who sought after God diligently with all their heart. Yes, he did. Key word was past tense, what we used to be, who we were before Christ, what we used to do and what we were slave to before Christ. We were slave to sin before Jesus saved our lives and transformed our lives and rescued us and empowered us by way of his Holy Spirit. We are not who we used to be. We are who God calls us now. We move forward. We're not in the past. We can't go back. But we definitely have today and we can move forward. It's by a Holy Spirit and in the Spirit. Yes. Thank you so much for your comments, Manuel. So when we withhold what God has given us, right, and what he has put in our hearts and we just try to hoard it for ourselves, <laughs> uh, what we're saying is that the gift that God freely gave us was not enough. We're looking for something else, right? Manuel says, that's right. That's very important. Let me put this on the screen. That's very important to know and never forget. Amen. When we receive more than enough, which we have in Christ, and he saves our lives, and we, he, has the, he has given us the antidote to the, poison, to the poison of sin. We have the antidote, right? We have Jesus. We deem others with the same condition as ourselves, unworthy of it. Right? So this is all through. Amen. Horizontally, we are all unworthy. But God found us worthy. Amen. If he didn't think that we were worth it, he would not have gone ahead with what he did on the cross. Once for all. Right? So... Are you likely to walk in guilt because you're thinking like, man, this cannot be all for me. This has to be for me and for others. And if you hold on to it and you think that it's only for you, eventually you're going to feel guilty because you're going to see people to the left of you, to the right of you that are not born again, that are not saved, that are not walking in victory. And you have this in you. And you're not giving it out. Freely you were given. Freely we should give. Right? And forgiveness is a big part of it. Can't be walking around. Or I can't be walking around. Let me just talk to myself. I can't be walking around in unforgiveness. And looking at people as if they're lesser than me. Because I have this salvation. Yes. Oh man. That is an ultimate gift. But I would want to share that gift. Trust me. Um. I'm an evangelist. I want to share the gift of God to every single person that I encounter, that I meet, because somehow, some way, I know that if they get this forgiveness and this salvation and they, they get this encounter with the Lord and with his word, they're going to live an amazing life. I'm not, going to, I'm not saying that it's free from any kind of pain or anything that happens in the world, but what I am saying, they're going to be forgiven and walking in victory. 
and they're not going to hoard um, this gift that was freely given to us. Um, they're going to freely forgive because they know they were forgiven. I forgive people because I know I was forgiven. And who am I um, to say no to a person who's asking for forgiveness? The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And what we know about our Savior and who he is to us. He comes to give us life, life in abundance. So I'm out of time. Go to Matthew chapter 6. Read it for yourself. I know there was a lot there. Chapter 6, verses 14 and 15 we were on, but I want you to read the whole chapter. And listen, obey God and forgive. So God bless you all. God keep you all. And remember always that God is good. Peace.